call the meeting to order at 4.08 p.m. on June 14th. Uh, first order of business is to <clears throat> congratulate Joyce Palmer Fortune on her re-election to the Waverly Select Board and the unfortunate circumstance that as she is out of the country, she cannot be formally sworn into the position and therefore cannot be a participant in voting or making or seconding of motions until such time as she is sworn in. Joyce is encouraged to participate in the discussions, however, as a member of the board. Uh, first order of business to discuss and vote to elect a chair, vice chair, and clerk of the select board. Do I have a motion? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> this be, yeah. uh, well, let's see. I move uh, that we discuss and vote to elect a chairperson, vice chairperson, and clerk. And I move that um, Fred Barron is the new chair. Uh, I would be the vice chair and Joyce can move into clerk unless somebody else has another idea. I would second that motion. Discussion? None. None. All those all, in, favor. All in favor. Aye. All voting members being here. Yep. We can raise hands. Vote is unanimous. Thank you. Good. Yay. Uh, meeting minutes. Any comments on the meeting minutes as distributed? None. No. Julie, I think you're going to have to make, <laughs> make the motions here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that. I guess I will because you're running the meeting. None here. Joyce, are there any from you? Discussion? No. Okay. Uh, I move that we accept the meeting minutes from May 30th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Vendor and payroll, roll warrants, any comments? No comments no here. Comments. We move that we accept the past vendor and not payroll. Necessary. Not even necessary. All right. Uh, Same vote. Public comment. Do we have any comments on any item that is not on the agenda? We have many people here. Anyone on Zoom? Nope. Next, schedule appointments. Uh, Amy Schrader, do you have a re request? I do. So you should have in your packet the memo I sent um, to request to purchase the build real cash management software system. Um, currently, I use Excel spreadsheet for our um, payment processing. Um, I have about four or five different types of Excel spreadsheets. Um, also, I have some for our bank accounts. Um, they're not linked together. Um, there's a lot of data entry, uh, duplicate data entry I have to do to complete the process. Um, what I would like to do is transition into the Zobrio cash management software system um, that is all linked together. So it will reduce data entry, um, it will reconcile bank accounts easier, and it will also connect to our town accountant's MPI software. Um, which will save her multiple steps. There's a letter of support in your packet too from the town accountant explaining the benefits um, that Conway and Shelburne have also, also used this cash management software and think it's very beneficial. Um, I also have the support of the previous treasurer collector that against me, um, which is huge. Um, the Excel spreadsheets do work. However, it is, I feel like there's more room for error. Um, it takes us a longer process. The efficiency is not as um, as good as the cash management software. So it's something I would love to get either now or in the near future. Um, I do, I know that on the agenda it says for ARPA funds to be used, um, I can contribute out of the treasure collector's budget, FY23 budget, probably about 50% of the implementation and um, training costs, which is around $6,000 to start. Um, and then there's a $3,000 annual subscription fee each year. Uh, it sounds very <clears throat> well. Can you give us for our next meeting a, a financial out, you know, put on paper yes. if you can get a, a bid? I do have that. I'm sorry. I should have. Okay. Yeah. That wasn't in our practice. Support. Yeah. Uh, yep. But yeah, just give us a, a request for you know what monies you yep. are going to want and where the other money would come from. Oh. Okay. And we can put it back in the agenda for next meeting. I I would see no, from a personal point of view, no reason not to, but we need 
to know what the numbers are. Okay. A couple of points of clarification. There was a previous software that was purchased that had to do with billing. Yes. Do these two link together or do they need to? My understanding is no. They they don't look okay. together. Um, and do they need to? Or do they no, need to they have something that translates? To. Okay, so these are two separate softwares, yes. standalone softwares. Um, when it says, if you start typing real estate, a drop-down list will appear and show every historical receipt description. Does it take the historical information from the current Excel spreadsheets, or do you need to spend time entering that I data? I need to spend time entering it all. Okay, and is that, will that be included in the $6,000 to start training, et cetera, or will that be something? Well, I think it would be something that I would do um, personally sit at the computer and type, type it all in. So that's yes, a part of your yeah. daily yes. position. Yep. Okay, yep. all right. That's Those are the only questions that I had. Joyce, any comments or questions? No, well, you hit um, a couple of them. Um, it, I've used Excel spreadsheet for lots of things, and it's good for lots of things, but um, there's better things than Excel for the job that we're trying to do here. So I, I think I support this um, step into the 21st century. Uh, yeah. As I said, it sounds something that's going to be very useful and necessary but we just need the specifics on the on the dollars for the request okay is anything else on that that's it thank you okay moving on code 19 still on the agenda rapid test available town offices library and police station no other further updates old business we've received letters uh regarding a dangerous nuisance dog hearing what we need to do today is set a date for that hearing. brian can you fill in on what what we need to do um so yeah the, the select board received the, the initial request was, was received on may 31st uh, 2023 from uh colette and chris Atlantic. um and the select board should <clears throat> Recognize that it accept that letter, and there was also additional letters that came since that time. Mm -hmm. um, so really, the decision before the board right now is whether it whether it feels that it wants to schedule a that uh, it's, it's dog hearing essentially to, to determine whether the, the dog in question is a danger uh, a dangerous dog or a nuisance or nuisance dog under the statute. Um, you have materials that were sent over from town council. You know. With some of those definitions as to what those are, mm -hmm. um, so at this point the issue is not whether the whether the dog is actually dangerous or a nuisance; it's whether the board feels that a hearing should be called to do so. Um, if the board elects to move forward with scheduling hearing, I would recommend. Uh, I mean, sort or of standard, standard default notice is uh, ten days. Uh, there's there. not a specific. There's not a specific period of days in the statute. Um, so I'd recommend, you know, if we could schedule it at least 14 days out, mm -hmm. you know, to give us time to, to, to put the notice together and send it out um, to that, to the individual in question here, that would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, I would move, we're going to move right into that. I would move based on the information submitted um, and the letters that we do schedule a danger, dangerous, not in sense, but a dangerous dog hearing uh, under number two, behaves in a manner that a reasonable person would believe poses an unjustified imminent threat. Yeah, I believe we've had sufficient, we've had sufficient yeah. complaints, comments, and reports on this situation that a, a hearing is certainly called for. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know if you want to characterize it as one or the other. Maybe just a, a dog hearing. A dog hearing. Right. Pursuant to general law. Let's go for a dog reality. hearing and right. yeah. it's dangerous or nuisance. That's a sort of point. Right. Yeah that we should schedule a hearing concerning this situation. Uh, so do we have to vote on that or? Well, we will, we will have to vote on, we need to look at the schedule. Uh, yeah, look at the schedule. schedule. We'll, it may be lengthy, so I think we should probably do it as a separate yes. hearing rather than as part of another select board meeting. Got it. Um, so for that, we'd probably be looking at either for two weeks, June 28th or 29th. At which point I will actually be out of the country. Okay. The 29th is the closing day. 
uh, happily would meet the 5th, the 6th, the 7th of July. Um, and yes, if, nece private. if necessary, could do what Joyce is doing and stay up and late and even in and be in Europe. Yeah. Uh, you swear. You can swear in, right? That's where Joyce said. Yeah. You want to meet? Where are you? You were in Finland or Sweden or something. Okay. And what, then why don't we look at the 5th or 6th of July? Either one works for me. Joyce? 5th or 6th. Um, I can make either of those work. Um, earlier in the day is easier for me, but this is important. I, so, yeah. um, I, I oh. think we're going to have to go later than four o'clock here simply to make sure there people I, can be off work. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that's uh, that's reasonable. Uh, so I would say, uh, pick a time. Five thirty. We had some questions. Yeah, no, I, I know. I yeah. want to square with Joyce first. I, I, yeah, yeah, yes, 5 30, 6 o'clock, uh, something like that would just be, would be fine. So we go for July 6th? Why don't we aim for July 6th, unless we have some comments that have a, yeah. So uh, given the, the, the name and address for us, uh, Kevin Schnell, 33 Laurel Mountain yeah. Road. Given the severity of our concerns and a large amount of neighbors, my concern is that's right by the 4th of July, and many folks are going to be out of town. Oh, yeah. And okay. not getting something done is, is a danger to everybody there and the person involved, not just the dog. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I would like to do it earlier, but it just doesn't sound like I'm here. What, what kind of a lead time are we looking at again, Ryan? Did you say we, 10 days? I'm going to give it at least 10 days notice. Yeah. So yeah. we're in the case. We, we could, yeah, we could certainly do it the following week. Or would, um, I know it would be a little tight, but would the June 26th or 27th work for anybody? Yes. Is that's, it I mean, it's, 10 days or 10 days? Go ahead. Um, I believe it's 10 calendar days. Okay, so. Yeah. Because well, the, the 28th would be 14 days. <laughs> but, um, so, but like 13 days is almost as much as 14 days. So if it were the 27th, then that... Yeah, we've, uh, got, so we've got a select board meeting on the 27th, though, and I don't think we want to do them oh, at the same time. I could do oh, yeah. June 26th. I am happy, I mean, given, as you point out, the severity of the situation, and I've had experience with it myself, um, would be happy to zoom in at midnight or whatever the heck on uh, June 26th. Does that give us enough time to be sure to get the notice out? I mean, we can we can mail the notice out tomorrow. Uh, I mean, that's when we get picked up. Um, that's twelve days. <laughs> and just, but, but it's kind of it's kind of tight if delivery is delayed to anyone at all. Okay. Let me see the language here. Yeah. I could look at the 29th or the 30th. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Joyce, what were you saying? Sorry. Oh, I was. Uh, yeah. The, the um, we were give us the same problem with people going away for long Fourth of July weekend. Just oh, and, and we've got another meeting. <laughs> she did say that. Yeah. yeah. I know I'm not available. Twenty-eighth. Did we discuss the twenty-eighth? But I, and then also just write in here, but I also just write in by yourself. And you yeah. So I don't know if that, I don't know if you have reference about that or not. Yeah. More than yeah. I think, mean, yeah, yeah, more we'll spread out here. <laughs> uh, that doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. We can try a schedule for the 28th. Shall we? I, 5, 5.30 on the 28th? Uh, Joyce? 5.30 sure. on the 28th? Sure. Catherine and Ben have a hand raised. Yes. Um, Cynthia Allen, 28 Ball Mountain Road. Mm. What options are there going to be for people who can make that meeting by Zoom or in person to present information 
that their experiences with this they can situation. send in letters as we've received from other people if they can participate in person on that day essentially that they can send a letter email giving what amounts to a testimony well that information yeah. included in the announcement about this hearing no, the announcements of the hearings will just be announcing that there will be a hearing. The evidence and support letters will not be in the, Got it. In the information sent out. So clarify for yeah. us, because we haven't done this before. This is something that we hear and mm -hmm. we vote on. Right. Um, is information given to the general public who is either considering attending the meeting or in attendance at the meeting prior to the meeting no. or during the meeting? No, the evidence no. is presented, the evidence at the is presented to us at, at to the select board. To, to the select board and yeah. referenced at the meeting. Got it. Uh, yeah. Second question: Is video testimony allowed? For instance, if you didn't want to write a letter but you wanted to record a brief video and send it in. Um, I, I would see no reason why not. Most yeah, I, yeah. I hesitate to say absolutely 100% without, yep, without checking check the council. Check. Okay. This, Just this isn't an issue of cross examination or anything right. we need to. So it makes you feel more like you're there if you're actually speaking, hmm. even if you're not present. But certainly submit um, letters. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, what on Zoom? Yes. Oh, is that a hand up? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Can you yeah. hear us, Catherine and Ben? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. There's, there's a reflection on my screen here that I couldn't see where your hand oh. was. The problem. Okay. Got it. Um, do you want something? Thanks. Yeah. First of all, I want to thank you guys for addressing the severity of this and moving to take some action sooner than later. And just to the extent you're thinking about the dates, we would lobby strongly for the soonest possible date, because from our perspective, every day that passes, it, we're getting closer to having a really, the dog's bitten a couple of people already, is menacing the neighborhood. And every day that passes, we're afraid it's going to kill our dog. So you oh know, I understand people are leaving for vacation. We won't be around that week ourselves. So we'll have to uh, zoom in or write letters, but really I think time is of the essence here. So that's why I would lobby for the very soonest possible date if possible. Well, that's pretty much what we've got going here. The, yeah. the 28th is just about as soon as we can schedule it. Okay. This, given that we have. Can you tell me your, Catherine and Ben, could you tell me your address please? Uh, sure, we're at 27 Laurel Mountain Road. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Yeah, Robert Bond at 32 Laurel Mountain Road. Um, you're framing this as a dangerous dog hearing. A, a dog hearing. All right, a dog hearing. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah um, can this be amended or a second hearing on the actual dog's owner and trespass? No. Okay. This is strictly about the dog. Strictly about the dog. Okay. So. I hear you though, and I am curious if there's something else that can be done because I feel like it's the dog's owner who really needs. Yeah, you know. that's, that's, that, that's a different. But it is a, an uh, entire. So trespass. So all, all, all that we have the authority to do is a dog hearing. Okay. The, the limit right. of the state court jurisdiction relates right. to the. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just wanted yeah. to check. And his question relates directly to what I'm asking. Kevin Schnell, 33 Lower Mont Road, is <clears throat> yes, the dog is causing some of the fear. But the person is weaponizing the dog. Mm -hmm. And that is, and my concern is, I don't think you know, the dog has had some issues, but because of the way she's using the dog. Mm -hmm. if, if the dog is found to be a nuisance, what happens to the dog? That's, That's for us to determine. Yeah. There are a variety of different things, uh, most of which involve restraining the dog in one way or another, humanely, <clears throat> in its yard or in its home. Am I allowed to say this? Yeah, that's in the it's in this information. Um, the, the very last step would be that a dog would be euthanized, but I would never, unless the dog itself and not the person was clearly at fault, like if it was rabbit. Yeah, we we have no jurisdiction at all over the person. Yeah. 
but but there are many 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 steps which involve uh, restraint and um, appropriate care for the dog. And we'll, we'll be working off of advice from council as to what what the limits or breadth of our authority is. Yeah. Okay. So huh. motion. Yeah. I move that we uh, we moving for the dangerous dog hearing. Uh, the dog dog hearing. Dog hearing. I move that we have a dog hearing on June twenty eighth at five thirty p.m. Second. All in favor? Uh, I. Can we say what the subject of the dog hearing is? The subject would be the dog about which we have received letters and complaints in the vicinity of Laurel Mountain Road. As in the in the in the owner. In the owner. Yeah. 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 And is Denise yet aware of this? Are she and her family yet aware of this, or will they be made aware? Um, they have not received notice yet. Okay. That's the next step. This is right. not the official notice. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry. What time did we say? Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. Yeah. Okay. Do we have anything else on that no. subject? I, no. Yeah, I was just going to voice my support for yeah. the, the people who said we should take care of this sooner rather than later. I I, I just I sort of feel like. I mean, two weeks is as fast as we can move, and I understand that. But I wish, I wish we could be faster. I guess is what I really just want to express that, and uh, uh, and I'm and I'm glad you're all being patient. And and um, you know, in the meantime, you've been calling the police, and you've been, you know, calling professionals, and I think that's what we'll have to do for the next two weeks. Yep. Anything else on the subject? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for acting. Thank you, everybody, Thank you everybody for joining in. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Next on the agenda, Fred. Right. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. A completely unrelated announcement. Yes. There's a tree down on, on Hayville Road at Weber Road. So I know everybody that's here knows oh. in that area. So we're going to expect delays or try to go on the road and go around that way. And, uh, oh. As trees, there's a lot of lines involved, and it's probably going to be you know, more people with it. And you get script. I'm not sure exactly where it is. Just yeah. like, yeah. yes, and maybe one more minute. I'm wiping where your radio is working. <laughs> How's my bath home? Good. Or <laughs> 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 you can get out of town. <laughs> okay. Um, Next, the Alliance Clean Energy Solar Contract. I understand that is not ready yet. That, that's not ready. That is not ready. So we will leave it at that. Pass that okay. agenda item. Uh, <clears throat> next item, the issue of the pink staining on the town hall storm windows. One of you. Yeah, so I don't know how, how far back we want to go with this, but um, so during the renovation of the of the of the town hall, um, shortly after storm windows were installed, there was noticed that there was some pink um, fluorescent or pink, uh, very light pink staining on some of the windows, um, and that was brought to the contractor's attention, and they were sent back. Um, they were removed, and they were sent back, and uh, the company sent new windows. And they were installed. Um, at some point, um, I would say it was in, but maybe it was a matter of months. Maybe it was, you know, twelve months. Um, um, the staining started to appear on some of the other windows that were previously, you know, previously looked fine, um, and it didn't seem to get any better. Uh -huh. So. About it was about 12 months ago. Um, we did a second survey of the windows with the architect came out and we looked at and from, from our first survey of the windows, um, we noticed that some of the original windows that were installed, some of the original storm windows that installed that were installed that didn't have it previously had it. And, but even some of the new ones that they shipped to us started to get this this pink staining you know, kind of around the edges, kind of around the edges. But um, so it's like, well, what's going on here? Um, so um, I emailed the, the, the company 
And I said, you know, we'd like these to be replaced under under the warranty. And the company said, well, it's obviously not our not our fault. It's obviously something the job site. Um, so, um, but they did offer to help us get in touch with with the manufacturer. Um, long story short, we ended up shipping two of the the window panes, you know, two of the two of the two of the window sections out to the company. Um, we say so, the company. This is Allied. Uh, Allied is the is the vendor. Uh, okay. True Light is the manufacturer. Okay. So we sent to the manufacturer. Okay. Um, and, and in between that, we we paid somebody because the company was like, well, maybe it's biological, like the film is some sort of growth. But we had a test with an environmental testing company, and they said it certainly wasn't mm -hmm. uh, biological. Uh, then we just so then they arranged for us to ship the windows at our cost. Um, to true light. Um, so we've been waiting to hear back, and I heard back at the end of last month. Uh, with once after following up multiple times, you know, but the one sentence was we tested them, and the the low e coating is degrading on the windows. Um, and that was that's the last that I've heard. Um, and when was that? That was the end of May. Um, so we're kind of at a point where I feel like we either we either need to sort of escalate what we're doing to try to get more responses and that would likely be involved in town council um, to see if we can get some movement. Um, I haven't had any experience with, with warranty claims on, on windows and how that would play out. That's obviously why I would want to, to bring in town council and sort of what happens when they say it's not our problem kind of thing. Because um, that's essentially what they what they told us originally was. You know, it's a job site and I, and none of us are window experts here and um they don't know what's causing it and we certainly don't know what's causing it um i don't know whose burden it is to show what's causing it it, it feels to me like our burden is to show here's the product you gave us and you warranted that it would last for this long yeah. and it didn't um now um it, 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 people could have different opinions about the windows. I went and looked at them today. Um, it's definitely more obvious when the sunlight is shining on them. Um, it's less obvious when there's not, you know, direct sunlight. Um, but I just think that we need to sort of take the next step to try to reach a resolution. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to say, well, replace them with the same ones if this, you know, if it, if it is indeed something with the environment. That exists, then it would seem like this is just going to happen again. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like we need to sort of push harder to get a resolution. Yeah, I, I would think that if the manufacturer is claiming that it's an installation problem, that at this point they should somehow arrange to have someone come here and explain what the nature of the installation problem is, and either and, you know, for us to figure out is it an installation problem or is it a product from right. there you're right there there's a claim was i oh and i, I i'm sorry i also failed to uh forgot about this part uh we sent some of the pictures to uh uh the umass i forget the the, the proper name umass mm -hmm. building sciences mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and you know they had some suggestions as to what it would be but judging from their guess was that it was that would that it was a degradation of the low e coding mm -hmm. um which could be, you know, could be maybe you know, it could be some chemical reaction that's happening in the windows, um, which is most likely what's happening, right? It, it most likely won't degrade on its own. Um, it could be some type of moisture problem, um, depending on how this is what the person the mass suggested. Depending on how the low EV coating is applied, if it's not fully uh, like sealed off, moisture can get behind it and it can sort of start, start, uh, it can start working. Good. Mm -hmm. know, dissolving the adhesive that that's holding the the film if it's that's how it's manufactured. But um, yeah, so I feel like just we need to yeah. escalate what we're doing. Uh, I realized there was a portion that I didn't get all of the information. The low E is degrading. Who said that? The window company. Yes. So they themselves say the low E is degrading. Yep. Okay. The low E coating is yep. degrading. They don't know why, 
Right. Uh, this is great. And, and my point would be, well, it's degrading. You sold us a window that yeah. you said would last X long. It didn't. Right. Again, and, unless it was an installation problem of some sort. That they could it come is back. Right. They, they could come back and yeah. say, we did something. We or the contractor did something inappropriate and right. it voids the warranty, but that's their argument to make and not ours. Right. Yeah. Neil, do you have any thing to add on this at this point? Yes, uh, Neil Abram, uh, Chestnut Plain Road and Town Hall Steward. Uh, the problem has been most severe on the Western windows and the uh, second floor landing uh, gets very hot. Uh, it's a little bit of an oven. You get uh, sunlight on the Western windows. It's a double pane system with the natural windows and then the storm windows. Uh, there was uh, advice that you had to put on the storm windows with the coating on the correct side. Uh, I think it, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was the inside of the storm window. So it was not exposed to the elements, but that means it's inside the two window uh, little window well. I don't know whether there's a temperature limit uh, for that uh, coating to uh, withstand. Uh, typically, when you adhere some, two things together, they have different thermal expansion uh, rates and the glass will stretch and the coating will stretch and maybe they don't stretch the same amount and so it uh, delaminates. But then the problem has appeared on uh, windows that don't get much sunlight, uh, such as the north windows, which only gets some small amount of sunlight uh, late in the day uh, in the summer. Uh, so uh, that's all just reasoning about it, but they haven't suggested, uh, I could imagine that someone come back and say, it's rated to withstand up to 90 degrees and maybe it's getting hotter than 90 degrees in between the two windows. I, I don't know. And would there be ways to have some ventilation that would reduce the heat buildup? I don't have, don't know that anybody has done temperature measurements to see if it's out of specification. There, there are things that experts would know to do uh, if, I, I mean, you take gla laminated glass and put it in an oven and see what temperatures it can withstand. So it's very frustrating to have this <clears throat> distortion in the appearance of the town hall. Uh, it was specified by the architects. It was provided by the vendors and supposed to be correct for a building like this. Uh, the church has wanted to get storm windows for its window replacements. Some parts of that are CPA funded. Uh, and they're hesitant to use this vendor uh, until they know that uh, what, what are the conditions under which it works. And I think the town should be hesitant to spend town money uh, in support of any uh, of that work that may be needed. So, so it's more than just the town hall, but the town hall part is uh, frustrating. There's something wrong here. Uh, it does appear to be uh, mechanical in the sense that the uh, either the heat adhesive is degrading or the coating itself is degrading. Mm -hmm. But what we see would be explainable by the coating beginning to peel away from the glass. And so at, when you stick something on, you may have a, a cover on your smartphone that you bought an extra glass protective coating for a smartphone. If you don't install it completely, then you begin to get little bubbles of air between the, the extra glass plate and the surface of your phone. And that's the sort of thing that seems to be happening. And the color could be related to how far the uh, coating and the glass have begun to separate uh, the, the, as Joyce knows the, the physics of this, the, the, the color change depends on how far apart they've 
separated. Uh, on the other hand, the color might be uh, caused by the degrading of the uh, adhesive. So yeah. uh, frustrating, yeah. the uh, manufacturer's response was prompt and immediate and they replaced a lot of windows. And when it came back, they threw up their hands and said, it's not our fault. Uh, we replaced <laughs> the windows. <laughs> but that doesn't address the cause. Yeah. So I think they, since it's warranty, they owe us uh, further action on this, yeah. in my view, but I guess that's where town yeah. council is needed to advise what can you demand that a vendor with a warranty do uh, to address the concerns. Right, I would agree. I think we need to yeah. bring town council in to get a picture of what what our, what our options are, are yeah. And what our possible remedies are. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Joyce, any comments on this? No, nope, that sounds sensible to me. Okay. I'm going to keep asking because the way the light it, the way the lights the screen, I'm getting reflection off of that, so I can't see hands up or anything on that particular box. Oh, okay. But would it help if I show you the clear blue sky that uh, we have here wow. at uh, at ten forty five at night? So. Oh my! I, I wish I could show you clear blue sky here. But I can't. <laughs> Would you like to see our store? Right. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. As opposed to our storm windows. Right. Uh, right. Okay, any other? We're going to have town council do that. I don't think that requires any yeah. kind of vote. No. Anything else? All set. Okay, next. Uh, guidelines for public comment period in light of recent Supreme Judicial Court ruling. Uh, as I understand it, the Supreme Judicial Court ruling says that in meetings such as select board meetings, people who make comments cannot be silenced for the content of their speech. In other words, they can insult, harangue, say anything they want mm -hmm. and not be told to sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to abide by that and be aware of it. Mm -hmm. I would like to propose that we just get on record a standard length of time for which people who are making general comments mm -hmm. or who are not on the agenda as presenting mm -hmm. uh, just a general limit of five minutes per person. So whenever this may arise, we're not accused of cutting anyone off. Uh, if there was a large crowd at the beginning of a meeting that has come to speak on a given subject, we can reserve the right to lessen that to two minutes or three minutes if we're gonna have 100 people looking to comment. We don't wanna go five minutes each for 100 people. Uh, but I think we need to set a ground rule up front so that we're not doing it on the fly. Yeah. When it can, when it can be taken for trying to silence people. Yeah, I would agree. I think I think a time limit on public comment, uh, individual sections mm -hmm. of public comment, is smart. Um, I've only been on the board for mm -hmm. one year. In your experience, or Joyce, in yours, has has it ever been a problem? Has it ever been a problem? Somebody asked me about this the other day, actually, uh, and and what I told them when we have a meeting where we think there's going to be, you know, tempers could flare. Someone yeah. starts and opens the meeting and says, "Hey, we'd like to have this uh, civil. We'd like to, you know, and it just kind of lays out some ground rules that aren't necessarily rules but are suggestions." I mm -hmm. think. That's probably still allowed under the law. We're allowed to suggest that, hey, the way to get this done is to be mm -hmm. civil. And um, I think that, so that was one that was one thought that came to me. Um, the exact amount of time, I think if we uh, if something is going to take more than five minutes, we ought to put it on the agenda for a meeting, right? 
that seems about right. But I'm thinking there have been times where uh, out of the public comment period, it may have taken more than five minutes and it was actually a, a good idea that we we spent that little bit of extra time. So uh, I suppose with the idea that we, we can be flexible, we can uh, sort of grant extensions, so to speak, uh, that, you know, generally letting it be a five minute limit seems, well, I think that would cover 99% of well, the public you know, comments the, the we have. The five minute limit is for individuals speaking on agenda items. I, I'm thinking back to the castaway, pub castaway meeting. Oh, I thought you were talking about public that comment because that's on things not on the agenda. In, 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 in any comment by an individual that is not presenting, whether it's in oh, oh, public oh. comments or on or in a discussion, public comment on it, or, or a comment such as we've commented tonight on the yeah. the uh -huh. dog here, that anyone from the public getting up to speak before us just addressing the subject be limited to five minutes per person per person yeah okay not not i'm sorry if i wasn't clear no not not just items not on the agenda but on you know discussions or hearings yeah okay set, up front setting that kind of limit on individual speaking time so that if we have a meeting where right. seven people want to speak each of them is allotted five minutes right but if we have 100 people want to speak we have the right to say okay you've got two minutes each yeah. Yeah. to make your comments in the instance that you were describing joyce was that one person commenting for more than five minutes or it was back and forth discussion oh, it, ended up, it was kind of the back and forth discussion that i'm sure took more than five minutes but it wasn't like none of their portions were more than five minutes. But if you added them up, yeah, they might have been more than five minutes. Uh, I, I, so, I, I just want to be in a position where we can enforce a time limit, yeah. which is not dependent on the content of someone's speech. And it makes yeah. sense for right. you know timely meetings and right. moving business. And, and, I, and I want to have that on the record up front rather than do it at the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I I I I agree. I agree. Is that something we need to move yeah, and vote I think on? We would need to vote on make sure it's in the minutes. Uh, right. I will move that we set a standing rule of this body for a five minute time limit for comments from the public, either on a unscheduled in the unscheduled public comment session or in commentary in a public hearing or other discussion of issues on the agenda. Five minutes per person. Five minutes per person. Second. Right. Oh, I guess I just add one yes. point of interest in that. Um, something that's that's common, I know, yeah. in public hearings um, we've seen around the country yeah. is um, individuals yielding their time to one, say, spokesperson yeah. for the group. Mm -hmm. So if there's five people saying they yield their time to that person, well, I'm not going to talk for 25 minutes yeah. as opposed to five five minutes mm -hmm. a piece. I've seen that as well, so that, I know that's something that... Consider. Each person is would be allocated five minutes if they want to yield to another person that's within their rights. Okay, all Good in, point. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we I also just want to say I'm grateful that for the most part, public comment is in our play in our area civil. Yeah. And, but I did and think this job understanding. And, and, and we hope it will stay we civil, hope but you mean so, but I think we can't this job understanding. We can't guarantee that. You know, things get people get a little upset sometimes. So and I think the thing that else? Joyce mentioned is, is important to highlight that you know, if it is an important topic, it, it really should be if placed on the next agenda. agenda. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I'm, sure. I, I'm mostly worried about items that are on the agenda that are attracting a large crowd. And that we don't have people getting up and filibustering, and <laughs> uh, you know, and when we say you know that's enough, you know, there's no time limit in place to enforce. Uh, we have two appointments as full-time police officers: Christian Dice and Zachary Liebenau. Chief, you want to? I'll try to keep it within five yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on while I start the clock. Five minutes in total. Five minutes. Not each. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each yeah, 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 you're on the agenda presenting. That's the exception. <laughs> so, you know, this, this will be very quick. I just wanted to make sure that um, you all receive my 
Um, and then did, I guess to call with my amended letter, uh, because originally the starting salary, this is going back. I only, sent the, first, I only sent the second one. <laughs> okay. So going back to January, when we first came up with the budget, when I first came up with the budget, uh, came up with the starting salary. Since then, a lot of things have changed. We've had discussions with cost of living, the cost of living increase um, for the town. And I know that these weren't previous employees in those positions, but um, my recommendation would be that we um, appoint them because of the, the money that was voted for the, the budget at town meeting included um, adding five and a half percent to those two positions, those positions. So um, I would just make the recommendation that we appoint them based on that, the salary of the 51 by 68 as the starting salary. Um, just because with our sergeant leaving, we didn't know this at the time either. Uh, duties that are normally delegated to him are going to be spread out between the, the two new officers as well. So coming in, they're going to have more responsibility than, than just being a, a police officer. Okay. And I think this is going to be an issue moving forward because I know there's other towns, towns around us that are that are raising the raising their starting salaries as, as kind of a yeah. type of thing. So. Trying to stay competitive in the, in the market. If we're too low, then they're just going to leave. It goes somewhere else. So, having that problem yeah. through the town. <laughs> yeah. 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 The salary is included in what was voted in yeah. and approved at the meeting. Yeah, so I'm not looking for any additional. Yeah. It's very convenient to start on July 1st, which is the first day of the fiscal year. Yeah. So we don't have any issues of salary getting bumped up in the right. early year. I, I move that we vote to appoint, uh, that we approve the appointment of uh, Mr. Vies and Mr. Liebenau as full-time police officers. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, how do you pronounce the name? I Christians? Yeah. Visa. 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 Like a credit card. Oh, okay. And yours is Savina? I tried, I tried to change. Yeah, so I tried to get him to change. <laughs> For six years, I stepped on yours. <laughs> Why does Savini? Like, like the credit card. Add, add the E as the end. I kept trying to make it French. I asked her to do That's actually the, the original pronunciation. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, now it's it's going to be from now on. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're Italian. Exactly. Now, we're, now we're Italian. <laughs> Next item, uh, you guys, you voted, right? Was it assigned? Yeah, they voted. Yeah, uh, letter of support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of the rural aid bills and in support of the South County Senior Center Service Incentive Grant application. Uh, Joyce, do you have any comment on the Service Incentive Grant application? I think every grant application is a good grant application, and we should support them. And we certainly, I think, should support the <laughs> The rural school aid. Rural school aid. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I I will move that we so we sign letters to support both of these items, rural aid bill and the incentive grant application for the senior center. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and which copies do we want to sign? Do we want to find their copies, or are you going to put copies out for us? I do not have the copy. All right. We can use these can use in the packet. What's that? That's it. They are in the packet. They're in the packet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I wrote a line, so I, we can't <laughs> use those. Uh, it should be three of them, right? We yes, have there are. bids from Kira Soil for diesel fuel and number two fuel oil. Uh, you know, both are apparently good prices given the market. Yeah. It, it, this is. They're really the reason we don't participate in the regional bid. Um,
Hey, Chris. I think they lost power or something. It's the only explanation. I wonder. It's All storming right. pretty hard here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. So, just, uh, wow. not really trying to make you jealous, but look at that. Just look at that. And the sun yeah. is going yeah. down. Where are you? I'm in Stockholm. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm flattered that it made me the host. I got a little flash up there that I'm now the host. Um, yeah. So, huh. Well, we were getting pretty close to the end. Yeah, I was really, honestly, yeah. just kind of checked in for the early meeting here. I got to go to Deerfield anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll stay here to see if they all come back, but I'm guessing if they're, it's going to take them a little while to recover. Yeah, to probably. Better. Okay. Anyway, right. well, enjoy your vacation. <laughs> oh, well, it's not really vacation. I'm working, but on the weekends. Oh, okay. I have every weekend in Stockholm. Is it so is it for a, a, a Smith College sort of thing? It's for, or yeah, science? It's, 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 yeah, I'm working in a lab. Oh, I'm cool. Pushing back That's the awesome. frontiers of science. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. enjoy your time there. Oh, yeah. And we're reading the recorder online every day. So. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Have a good See one, See you later, Chris. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Uh, it looks like the storm over there might have cut power, so our meeting might be cut short. Hey. We just had a, a cold lightning strike and we lost power for like 30 seconds. Oh, uh, yeah. Chris Larrabee says uh, it, it, basically it was him and me. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so we chatted for a while. Uh, he's got to go off to a meeting in Deerfield. What? So, uh, I know. Uh, but he said he got the good parts of our meeting. So that was good. Okay. How does he know he's missing the rest of it? Well, he's missing the town administrator updates, which I think this to me is an important the highlight of every meeting. <laughs> it is. It is. But I don't see uh uh I don't see Julie there. Oh, she went to uh use the restroom should be right back. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I was just uh, sending an email to you saying, hey, I'm going to stick it out on Zoom. But if you're not back in a little while, I'll assume you lost power for good. The option being but, flying back for the rest of the meeting? <laughs> no, the option, well, I'm, you know, I'm not sworn in anyway, right? So, no, I just, it just sort of felt like if I just like hung up and went away, it'd be, uh, it's like, I don't know, it seemed impolite. All right. We are back. Okay. We're we're back to yeah. Yeah. Okay. after a brief power delay. It does say it's recording. Okay. I'm gonna uh, pause it and restart. Just right. Okay. We were getting filled in on fuel oil. Yes, this is. All, we always get a very good bargain uh, when we when we go out individually for fuel oil. Um, and this year, no exception. The regional, the lowest regional price was thirty nine cents, and this what's being offered to the town is twenty two cents. Did you say twenty two cents? Yeah. Thank you. Rat price plus twenty two. Yeah, rat price mm -hmm. was twenty two cents.
This is something okay. we need to move and vote on. Yeah, I move, I move we award the contract for fiscal year 24 for diesel and fuel oil and to fuel oil to Paris oil. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Uh, the select board appointment list, if I understand correctly, is not ready yeah. yet. Is we're not ready yet to vote on it, so that will get put off for next meeting. Yeah, I, if we if we could just just talk yeah. about for a second, there were some um, a couple of positions that we talked about in the past that uh, we thought you might want to change. One of them being the the South County EMS Board of Oversight. Um, yeah. 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 Um, discussions previously about wanting the select board member to be, you know, one of those representatives. So that's just something to um, think about moving forward. Um, and I also want to mm -hmm. go through the list. It, it's been a while since we've reached out to some of the people um, on this list. We just sort of typically they just get reappointed and nobody says anything. And um, I just want to reach out to some people that to make sure that they're committed to doing another another full year. Well, everybody is sent an appointment letter. That's reappointed. Right, and they're sworn in. Yeah. Right. I just want to reach out to some people to make sure that they they want to continue. Um, okay. Because there's some, there's some people that I know that might not want to continue, but I want to reach out to those people. And we also we also the number of vacant well a number we have some a handful of vacancies. Um, so if we could think about anybody that might be good to fill those vacancies, that would also be good. Um, right on beach has vacancies uh recreation commission i believe has yep. some vacancies yep um, yeah energy committee open space committee yeah two fence viewers yeah fence viewers and field drivers that's a hot, right that's a hot, like what, that's a hot position in town why do we need four of them i don't know <laughs> okay uh, i mean two seems like they could split one to one which hopefully we won't experience here, but the next month. So, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, if we could think of, you know, anybody that might be interested, and we can do the, we can do the, you know, the final vote at the next. We can do the votes at the. At the okay. At the end of we'll, we'll get an updated list. Yeah. In the next time. Uh. An actionable list. An actionable list. An actionable list. Uh, select board liaison upset uh, updates. Upset. Uh, I have two things. One is just to note that John Hannum is retiring as fire chief this week. He will re be replaced next week by JD Kennedy. I want to thank John Hannum for his service over the years to the fire department and to the town in general. And wish JP the best in filling John's shoes. Uh, the other update I have is I met with Brian and Keith Fardwell the other day. And we are trying to have an action plan to, to get the highway garage planning moving and we had some thoughts on uh, on how we might want to do it to try to sidestep some state regulations uh, and that we want to look into building using a prefab building rather than designing our own because if we can bypass a design stage, we can bypass some state regulations that. Right, Brian. The legally bypassed that, right? Le le legally. Yeah. Yes. State regulations by those states. There are state regulations regarding what you who you have to hire and what you have to contract for if you are doing a design for a project over a certain a million and a half dollar fee. But if we do a prefab building, which is pre-designed, we do not have to do that design phase. Or would if if there are buildings of that sort that are on that are suitable for our purposes? Okay. Yeah, one one of one of the things Fred's referring to is what's called the requirement that the, the municipalities hire a uh, OPM or an owner's project manager. Yep. Which is essentially a, an engineer or architect that that the town hires to supervise 
the architect or engineer that mm -hmm. the town hires mm -hmm. to do the actual design. Right. Okay. Um, this is not about prevailing wage or no, it's yeah. still prevailing wage. Any penny we spend is, is yeah. prevailing wage. Yeah. Um, this is just like step in the OPM. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there might be some efficiencies, and we can compare costs of all, mm -hmm. you know, a build on site or a, or some type of pre, uh, prefabricated mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. There might be some cost savings there too, but it's, yeah, everything will have to look into. Yeah, but we're we're just kind of keep that moving, essentially, so that we hope at some point when federal or state funds come available for such projects that we've got what they would refer to as a shovel ready project. Yes, right. So that we don't have to start start the process when the money might be available. Right. Right. We're also going to reach out to a USDA Rural Development in Amherst because um, that's that's a, a likely funding source of, of, of loans and possibly a, a mix of loans or grants. Sure. Um, they have a, I think uh, it's been a while since I've, I've looked at the program, but it's essentially a, a public facilities program um, for, for rural towns. Um, so, and what's it called again? I'm sorry. Um, it's the USDA Rural Development. Okay. Um, cool. That's the federal agency. Excellent. Um, it provides um, loans and, and grants for municipalities, for rural municipalities. Um, we also know that our area legislators are, have been trying and will continue to try to work in Boston yeah. to get a source of funding for small town. Um, Municipal buildings, yeah. Whether that comes to fruition or not, yeah. Um, yeah. Julie, do you have any updates? Uh, update on uh, the tree tree issues uh, that were brought to us by Mariana Massen uh, a couple a month or two ago. She has spoken to folks uh, in Williamsburg who do have a tree warden. Um, they currently have a citizen's shade tree committee, but it's not staffed right now. And their budget is actually very small, which is why they don't do a lot of cutting. They actually have, I believe it's Northern Tree Service come in and do cutting for them and that just move things to the side. They don't take the trees. Um, they have an arborist. Uh, I think actually that the, the tree warden is a former arborist, so has a lot of knowledge about when to cut and when to trim, et cetera, et cetera. I honestly don't know what Keith's background is or the background of anybody in our town. Um, she's speaking with some other people locally, uh, some other citizens of Waverly about just putting together a committee to look at tree preservation or tree replanting or how we manage our trees. And she'll get back to us with more information when she's ready with that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Joyce, anyone contact you? There about uh, any <laughs> um, well, yes, I guess uh, the the boo uh, for the senior center. Uh, th there's just a few little things. They got uh, a grant. Um, this is a grant that helps fund some of the, like the Tai Chi class and a couple of other things that they cool. do. So they got a, they got one of the grants, and Jennifer is just applies to everything. It's really nice. Um, let's see. There was. Um, Everybody's going to receive a postcard uh, in the, I, I don't know what the timeline is on that, uh, but uh, basically something to let everybody know, hey, these are services, we have a senior center and you should come and, and just to kind of do a little bit of outreach. Um, and they're uh, sponsoring some conversations on transportation. That's uh, that one I think is going to be an interesting one. They've got two meetings one of which will have a zoom link and the other not uh one is with pvta and one is with frta um, and they they want to just talk with people about what transportation problems they have uh in fact for this particular meeting they've offered free transportation for seniors if they want to come and be there in person uh for this so uh i just wanted to let people know that uh, those kind of things are happening and uh and our senior center director is awesome. Have there been any further considerations on the building in Sunderland that we talked about last time? Uh, nothing that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, and administrator updates, Brian. 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to piggyback on on what Joyce is talking about. Joyce, this the senior center annual picnic is coming up, right? Oh yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm trying to find the date of that. I can't go, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, it's our summer carnival. That might be what they call it. June twenty first, twenty twenty three, eleven a.m. at Burley Heath Park. Music, pie baking contest, food and games. Um, and that will be at, at Curly Heat Park. So, Sorry, what time was that? Um, oh, starting at 11 a.m. Bring your best pie recipe. Recipe or pie? Let me say, enter our pie baking contest. Maybe you should bring both. <laughs> it's like, are they going to be baking there? <laughs> Musical provided by <laughs> In between the window panes. Ticket, oh, tickets are $10. Thanks. FYI. So yep. if anybody's looking to purchase tickets, you can call the Senior Center um, or find more information on their website. All right, um, town administrator updates. Um, zip code discussion meeting is scheduled for June 29th at 6 p.m. at the town hall. And how is notification of that going out or has it gone out? I send out postcards to every household in Maybe. And is there going to be a robot? I'm going to send a robot on this week. Awesome. Is there going to be a Zoom link? I think we could make it happen. We'll be at the town hall. I did not put yeah. it on the postcard. Oh, it's not a Zoom account postcard, but we could. Mm. Yeah, it would be a low tech Zoom. It wouldn't be the high tech Zoom that we have become accustomed to. It would be a Zoom on my phone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we could set something up if, if yeah. set something up over there. Um, I, I don't have much. Uh, Fred touched on uh, the fire chief retirement. Um, I don't have much more to add to that. Um, one of the things uh, I think the board should talk about um, maybe at the next meeting is so um, each year we the town appropriates $30,000 into an overlay account um, that the Board of Assessors has access to. Um, it's, to it's to pay for any abatements or exemptions that are issued throughout the year um, so that the town is relying on that money to come in. So it's a source of money that, that makes up that. But So each year there's excess. We're not, we're not spending out that $30,000 this year. And um, so the town calendar uh, suggested that that we look at the amount in the account, and the amount in the account is um, just over two hundred thousand um, dollars of money that um, could likely some of that um, we should have discussions with the assessors. Some of that could likely be released, you know, for other purposes within the town. Um, but either it, for this fiscal year, depending on when it was released, and it's released by the board of assessors by vote with the board of assessors, the money would be available for appropriation, meaning it would still require town meeting to spend, or it would, if it's still in that account at the end of the fiscal year, then it would go to the following year's free cash, which again requires an appropriation, further appropriation, right? So it requires a town meeting vote to spend it. So, but there's there's that money that's in that account that some of that, maybe a good portion of that could be released uh, for other purposes, for other town purposes. So cool. Um, is this something we should reconsider in the budgeting process, whether we need to appropriate $30,000 each year if it's just been accumulating? Right. So that's that's something that I need. I'll check with the town accountant yeah. about um, whether prior year excess can be, you know, can be spent for um, future year uh, exemptions and abatements. It, it seemed to me that it could be, but I just want to double check. And, and, and whether as an on, on an ongoing basis, do we need to continue to budget that much every year? Right. If it's 
essentially just been accumulated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll look into that. And then I just wanted to, to let you know that there was a CPA application submitted from the Recreation Commission um, for um, to replace some of the fencing at Hillary Park, um, to put in some new fencing uh, between the, the parking lot and the fields um, to try to keep any uh, people who might be looking for a fun place to do things in their vehicle, like donuts or something, keep them off the field. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and, so it's fine. yeah, <laughs> and um, how come I'm drawing a blank on the other um fencing? Oh, and then and then money for the uh, the plantings that the, the, the replacement trees and the shrubs and those types of things that need to be that need to be planted down there. So that was submitted to the, the CPC by the deadline this past Tuesday. So, okay. Uh, last item I anticipated should have been anticipated, but wasn't on the agenda. A congratulations to our newly elected town clerk. Yeah. And can I ask, were there any surprises, or were there any people elected who in the write-in where there were no people on the ballot? There are lots of write-ins, and there are some discrepancies and some things that we have to work out before we announce those. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the unofficial, I'm sorry, the, but the unofficial results yes. are posted on the website. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I move that we adjourn this meeting. Second. Our next meeting is June 27th at 4 p.m.